On this worksheet, we're gonna practice predicting the products of Diels alder reactions. We're also gonna do two examples of showing how to make a molecule using a Diels alder reaction. We call this a retrosynthesis, so figuring out what we would need to combine to get this particular molecule using Diels alder. Now let's start by predicting the products of these first four reactions. Now when you're working on a Diels alder reaction, it's important that you begin initially by just focusing on the six carbons that are actually involved in the reaction. That's going to be four carbons from the diene, which I'm going to number one, two, three, four, and two carbons from the dienophile. And I'm just going to keep numbering. So every carbon is going to get its own number, one through six, and I've got them going in a counterclockwise direction. That's just my preference. Once you get those six carbons numbered, then we're going to go ahead and do the curved arrow notation. When I draw the curved arrow notation, I like to start at the bond between carbon number one and two, but you can start at any one of the double bonds. It doesn't matter which one you start, or, or the triple bond. So you could start here, or you could start here, or you could start here. Uh, but again, my preference is to start up here with the bond between one and two. And then what you're going to do is take that bond and draw a curved arrow, either clockwise or counterclockwise. Again, it's your choice. I like to move in a counterclockwise direction, and that's just my personal preference. But you could be going in the other direction if you wanted. Once you have made that initial decision, so once you've selected the first double bond that you're going to work with and you've made the decision to go either clockwise or counterclockwise, you have to be consistent for the rest of, of the curved arrow notation. So now we're going to move to the, the next double bond in the molecule, and we're going to draw another curved arrow, again, going in the same direction, so I'm still going counterclockwise. And then I'm going to go to my last, this is a triple bond, and I'm going to draw that curved arrow again counterclockwise. These last two curved arrows that I drew, they're aiming at nothing, like they're pointing into outer space because these are going to be places where we create a new bond. So over um, now, we're kind of ready to start sketching out our product. I'm going to begin by just placing dots for the six carbon atoms of the, the, um, the diene and the dienophile. So those are my six carbon atoms, and I'm going to number them carbons one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we're going to figure out what we need to do to connect them. So in between carbons one and two, we started with a double bond, but it became a single bond from that curved arrow. So one to two is a single bond. In between two and three, we started with a single bond, and then we moved some more electrons in there. So two to three became a double bond. 3 to 4 started as a double bond, but moved electrons away, so 3 to 4 is now a single bond. 4 to 5, originally there was no bond, and we created that bond in between carbons 4 and 5, so we now have a bond there. 5 to 6 was a triple bond, and we moved some electrons out of it, so 5 to 6 is now a double bond. And then 6 to 1, we created that bond, so we've created the bond between 6 and 1. So there's my, there are my six carbons, the four carbons from the diene and the two from the dienophile, and they're all connected with the appropriate number of bonds. The last thing that we have to do is just put onto the six carbons of the ring whatever other substituents may be present on the, on the diene and the dienophile. Carbon number six has this carboxylic acid group, so I'm just going to draw that in, and this reaction is done. That's all there is to it. Pretty easy. Let's try all of that again with our next example. So we're going to start by numbering the four carbons of the conjugated system, the diene, and the two carbons of the dienophile. And then we'll go ahead and we will place those same six carbons over here and get it ready for us to draw the product. Uh, I made that kind of small, so I'm going to make it a little bit bigger give myself a little bit more room. And I'm going to number. And when I do this numbering, notice that I'm keeping super consistent with like the carbon number one is at the top here and it's at the top here. Carbon number two is down to the left and so on. So I'm being super, super consistent. Let's now let's work on our curved arrow notation. So we can pick any bond we want, but I'm going to pick one to two because that's where I always start. And I'm going to move that bond counterclockwise. Then I'm going to go to the next double bond and I'm going to move it counterclockwise. And then I'm going to go to the last double bond and move it counterclockwise like that. Now, what did we end up with? 
One to two was a double bond, but now it's a single bond. Two to three is now a double bond. Three to four is now a single bond. We created a bond from four to five. Five to six became a single bond, and we created a bond from six to one. So there's our six-membered ring. And now we just have to fill in what we have attached. We've got this aldehyde group on carbon number six, so we'll draw that in. And then we also have, don't forget about this little guy, we have this carbon that is in between one and four. It's kind of awkward to draw it, but there it is like that. There's another way to draw this particular molecule, which uh, looks really cool, but is a lot of times it's kind of harder for students to visualize. Uh, and actually I'm gonna reorient that uh, like this. And I'm gonna place the numbers on this molecule. This is called a, a bicyclic molecule. It's two rings that are fused together. So I'm gonna put the numbers on there to make it easier for you to see the relationship between this notation and this notation. They both represent the same thing. When we do have bicyclic molecules, if we have substituents on carbon number five and six, those substituents do get oriented down in this sort of direction. Remember, when I initially drew it, I drew it sticking up like this, which looks nice and pretty, but that's not actually the, the stereochemistry of that substituent. So we want to point it down. And by down, we mean away from this group right here, so kind of pointing down at it and towards the double bond, kind of in this direction. Our next example is a little bit trickier because our diene is in the S trans conformation and it's a lot easier to visualize this reaction when the diene is in the S cis conformation. So I'm actually going to begin by redrawing my diene so that it's lined up S cis and more appropriate for this diels alder reaction. And I'm going to do that over here on the side. So when you need to redraw a, a draw a new conformation, the bond is the bond that is going to rotate is the single bond in between the two double bonds. So that bond is the one that's rotating. Now I always like really need to be careful when I do this because I have a tendency to screw up the position of the substituents when I rotate these molecules around. So I'm going to use my numbers, one, two, three, four, just to make sure that I haven't messed up anything. One, two, three, four. It looks like I did okay. Uh, now I'm just going to kind of have the burden of like ignoring, ignoring this right here because it really, really is in my way. And maybe I'm going to try to like just kind of cover it up a little bit, make it not there anymore so I don't have to look at it anymore. All right, so we are now ready for our curved arrow notation. Let's see if I can move that over. I can't move that. Okay, we're ready for our curved arrow notation. Um, I'm gonna add carbons five and six over here. So we are going to pick any bond that we want. I like to start with um, carbon number one and to two, the bond between one and two, and move that bond clockwise. And then we're going to go to the next double bond and we're going to move that one. Or I said clockwise, I meant counterclockwise. And then we're going to go to our last double bond and move that counterclockwise as well. And we're creating bonds in these positions right here. A student once told me they liked the diels alder reaction because this intermediate looking thing right here looks like a coffin. Let's put our six dots for the six membered ring that we're going to form in this reaction one, two, three, four, five, six, and let's fill in our bonds. From one to two, we have a single bond. Two to three, we have a double bond. You might be noticing that's kind of a pattern, and it is every time in these reactions. Two to three is always a double bond, the way that I number it. Four to five is a single bond. Five to six is a single bond. Six to one is a single bond, and what do we have attached? We have a cyanide on carbon number six, and we also have a methyl group on carbon number four. So there it is. 
Now, one thing that I want to point out about this particular set of reagents for the diels alder reaction, um, I'm drawing them coming together in this way where the methyl group on carbon number two is sticking up and the cyanide group on carbon number six is also sticking up. But it is certainly possible that either one of these, so either the diene or the dienophile, either one of them could be in the reverse order. So for example, maybe um, we have the dienophile in this orientation right here. And that's going to give us a second product. So there is going to be a second product. I'm not going to take the time to draw it out, but you can imagine the second product that would be formed just simply by taking this molecule and turning it around or taking this molecule and turning it around, reorienting it. And it's going to change the relative position of the methyl group and the cyanide. We've got one last example to go. And so let's take a look at this one. Um, this one's a little bit tricky because we do have a lot of double bonds going on in this molecule. And here's our diene, one, two, three, four. And here's our dienyl file, five, six. So let's, let's see like how much of a shortcut we can take here. Let's just start right away by drawing our six membered ring. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we know that we're going to be forming a double bond between carbons two and three, and that's the only double bond we're going to have in our product. Occasionally, we also have a double bond between five and six. We had it in the very first example. That's only the case when our dienophile is an alkyne, a triple bond. If our dienophile is an alkene, then we never have a double bond in the five, six position. What kind of substituents do we have on this molecule? Uh, we have on carbon number six, a cyanide, on carbon number five, a carboxylic acid, and on carbon number two, we have this uh, alkyne thing. There's that product. Now that hopefully you're getting the hang of this, let's take a look at how to do retrosynthesis for these. So how, what, what molecules would we combine to make these particular products. And I'm just gonna go straight down to this one. This, the last one is actually gonna be easier for us than this one up here. Um, first thing that we wanna do is identify the six-membered ring in this system. So we wanna know where the six-membered ring is at. That's gonna be step number one. Um, and I'm just gonna kinda highlight it. All of the deals, alder reactions form a six-membered ring, so we should begin by focusing on that. The second thing that we wanna do is find our carbons two and three. Remember that we always put a double bond in between carbons two and three. So that's gonna be handy for us to start by finding carbons two and three. Once we have found carbons two and three, then it's gonna make it a little bit easier for us to identify the four carbons of the diene because those are carbons one, two, three, and four, and then the two carbons of the dienyl file. Now, um, to help us actually predict the products of this reaction, I'm gonna use curved arrows again, and I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna start with a double bond, uh, and I could start with either one, and I'm gonna to choose to go counterclockwise because that's always my preference. And then I'm gonna to skip to the next bond. It's not a double bond, but I'm gonna to skip to the next one, and I'm gonna move it counterclockwise, and then I'm gonna skip again and move it counterclockwise. These curved arrows are a little bit trickier because um, we're not always starting from a double bond. Like the first time we're starting from a double bond, but the rest of them we're starting from single bonds. And let's see what that gets us. I'm gonna draw dots for the six carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six, and I'm going to number them. One, two, three, four, five, six, and let's see what we've got. Um, for spots one and two, we took the electrons from carbons six to one and we moved that into this area over here. So it started as a single bond, but then we gave it some more electrons. So now that's a double bond. From two to three, started as a single bond, but we moved its electrons. So it is now, uh, sorry, I said it's single. Started as a double bond, we moved its electrons and now it's just a single bond. Three to four started as a single bond. We gave it some more electrons, so three to four is now a double bond. Five to six, or four to five is no longer a bond. We took the electrons away from four to five, so there's no bond in this position anymore. Five to six started as a double bond, and we gave it some more electrons, so five to six is now a triple bond. And then six to one started as a single bond, and we broke that bond, and so there's no bond there anymore either. 
So we've got two pieces of the molecule right here. What else do we need to attach? On carbon number three, there's a methyl. On carbon six, there is a ketone, two products. Let's try, we've got one more example up here. So the first thing we have to do, I mean, there's, we've got a couple options. One of the things we have to do is find carbons two and three, the carbons of the double bond. Another thing that we have to do is find our six-membered ring. And this, because it's a bicyclic, is a little bit trickier to visualize, but there it is. And let's keep going with our numbering. Four, five, six, one. Pick our double bond, that's between carbon two and three, and move clockwise. Kind of hard to draw curved arrows with this bicyclic thing, but that double bond is gonna go um, into three, four. Go to the next bond, which is four, five, and move those electrons to five, six. Go to the next bond, which is six, one, and move those electrons over to one, two. Draw some dots for your six carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, and let's start with um, let's start with one to two. So one to two was a single bond. We gave it some more electrons. It is now a double bond. Two to three was a double bond. We took away some of its electrons, so now it's a single bond. And three to four was a single bond, got some more electrons, now it's a double bond. Four to five, that bond was broken, it's not there anymore. Five to six started as a single, now it's a double. And six to one, that bond has been broken. So these are the two pieces. What else do we have on this molecule? On carbon number six, we have the aldehyde group. And then don't forget about this guy right here. We have another carbon that is connecting one to four. So these are the two that we would combine together to make this molecule via Diels-Alder.